The Chateau of Versailles, like Alcine's palace, at summer solstice, shall flame into the sky and nothing there remain. The king thinks tis vision of a madman, the fruit of a fanciful imagination. Unleash Bonton with all his hoard. Twill be in vain, for time is running out, and I defy the star-like king, with all his whirling planets, to find the riddle of the scheme with titles, heads, and Aesop's words that set alight my flaming brands, the frogs and Jupiter. <laughs> it reads like the raving of a lunatic. My service to the king prevents me from looking into this matter. I want you, Lalonde, to take charge of it. As a valet of the bedchamber, you can move about without hindrance. You know the chateau, its people, and its customs. Ask endless questions and report to me when you find anything suspect. But be careful. Don't spread the rumor that a madman is threatening the king. Make haste. You have only one day. Eight and a half hours of the clock. As soon as the king awakens, Dakin, the first doctor, inquires after his health. Did your majesty sleep well? Was your majesty too hot? Would his majesty like to be rubbed down? Thank you, Dakin. Your majesty has been in perfect health these last two months. While Bonton washed the king's hands, the family entrance arrived, as they did every morning. Monsieur, the king's brother, Monseigneur, the Dauphin, and the Duke of Maine came to witness the king. Well, my son, what time did you set out to hunt the wolf this morning? I've heard it said, Monsieur Monsard, that the Prince of Condé has commissioned more work from you at Chantilly. Yes, he is insatiable. The orangery is no sooner finished than he begins to demand that the little chateau be embellished. You have already done a splendid job. Indeed, the Prince is so much enamoured of his residence that he's rarely seen at Versailles. He's wrecked by gout and therefore stays at home. I do not believe His Highness is a lover of solitude. That I can confirm. The prince is a great lover of society, and albeit he's rarely seen at court, he nonetheless imitates its splendor in his Chantilly residence. For many a time he has summoned me to entertain him. He is generous and discerning.
admirable piece of work. This Paracel is sure of his skill. He paints these battle scenes wonderful well. Well, sir, what do you want? And so I should. This morning I was to continue to decorate the ceiling. But someone has spirited away my sketches. Nothing but the themes I was supposed to paint today on the ceiling of the Salon of War. You will understand my vexation. I was about to ask as much of you. Be swift, I must have them before noon. If you hear any news, I shall be in the Salon of War. The court is attending the robing of the king. Monsieur Bonton said not to disturb him. Oh, very well. You may pass. No, your personal masters will not restore peace in the kingdom. Rest assured. 
King has spoken of sending Monsieur de Dura to the Duke de la Force. I assure you he will not obtain the Duke's convert. The King's rising from bed ceremony ended with his ablutions. Before the eyes of the courtiers admitted among the first entrants, the barber groomed his majesty before putting on his shawl. Then, room was made for the king to proceed to the salon for the robing ceremony. Authorized courtiers joined the company while his majesty partook of a light collation. Each hoped for a glance from the king, inquired after his health, and listened to or spread the rumors of the day. The king, exposed to the public, performed his usual role. He was shaved, washed, and then dressed. Once dressed, the king returned to his bedchamber for a brief morning prayer. Once he had said his prayers, the king, followed by his ministers, went to the council chamber where matters concerning the kingdom were discussed. I assure you, my lord, that in a few days, Libra is to present a crucified Christ of his own composition to the king. But didn't his rival Mignard do a painting with the same theme very recently? Yes, indeed, my lord, he did. The rivalry between the two painters borders on the ridiculous. All for art's sake, of course. But never mind these artists' quarrels. We rarely see you in court, my lord. Are you finally tiring of Chantilly? Alas. I am come again to plead the cause of the Prince of Conti and his brother. I fear lest His Majesty hold them in disgrace on their return from Hungary. I have come to seek his clemency. The king is in council. None may pass this door. I do not know, but it may last longer than usual, for Monsieur de Louvois arrived with large portfolios. If they contain plans, then they must be discussing the fortresses of Monsieur Vauban. Ah, good timing, Lalonde. I want you to go right away and inform Madame de Maintenon that His Majesty shall visit her this afternoon to work.
What business have you with Madame de Maintenon? Madame left strict orders. She is unwell and will see no one. Yes, that's possible. Don't bother me with that. More and more of these are being found. See, I myself found one this morning that libels his majesty and his family in the most outrageous manner. Well, Alon, have you found any new clues? God's truth, more lampoons. Do you realize, Lalonde, that the authors of these pamphlets should be condemned to exile or locked away in the Bastille? But now nothing seems to be able to stop them. Hmm. Nevertheless, we shall see who has the last word in this. I'm counting on you, Lalonde. God's truth, more lampoons. Do you realize, Lalonde, that the authors of these pamphlets should be condemned to exile or locked away in the Bastille? But now nothing seems to be able to stop them. Hmm. Nevertheless, we shall see who has the last word in this. I'm counting on you, Lalonde. Oh, I see you're making progress. Very good. I know not what to think, Lalonde. I understand nothing of all these charades, nor why we find them throughout the chateau. But this sadic mystery causes me to fear an imminent, doubtless unfortunate, conclusion. Continue your investigations, Lalonde, with all possible haste. You are on the right track, but he is still playing with us. Halt, lad! What's in that box you guard so preciously? Sketches. Interesting. By whom?
Show me that. Reassure Lebrun. This box contains his work, but someone has placed a mignard on the top of the pile. I shall remove it. Its presence could cause quite an uproar. Do you know, Your Eminence, who is this strangely dressed man who speaks with the Princess of Conti? I know not, madam, but I have been informed that a certain Marquis de Scaparello is visiting the court and has requested an audience with the king. Might it not be he? Impossible, for I knew a Scaparella in days gone by, an ageless fellow yet close to the grave, unless he found a fountain of youth. How strange. You intrigue me, madam. Who can it be? I should very much like to know, for his presence troubles me like a bad omen. Yes, these are indeed my sketches. Ah, you've saved me. I shall remember you for it. This is not my work. It's a palpable imitation. Observe these strokes. They are exaggerated. The lines are too heavy. Keep it. I have no use for it. Strange indeed. What can these words mean? The plot thickens. Congratulations, Lalonde. You have been diligent. Ah, but the council has now ended and mass is about to begin. I must leave you. When the robing was over, the king went to the council chamber. Surrounded by his ministers, he managed the affairs of the state. The doors were shut to ensure secrecy. The most important of his ministers, the Marquis de Lofois, announced the agenda for the day. Gentlemen, be seated. I'm listening. In the meantime, the courtiers awaited His Majesty's appearance in the hall. 
Gentlemen, the king. It is noon. The king goes to mass. The court form a train behind him. His majesty, accompanied by princes and princesses, crosses the grand apartment on his way to the chapel. If your majesty would be so kind as to look at this petition, I beseech your majesty on behalf of my nephew, who is the victim of a terrible trial. We shall see, monsieur. We shall see. The king took his place in the royal gallery. And the princes and princesses ranked behind him in order of hierarchical precedence. The king forbade talking and recommended devotion. You know very well that this room contains His Majesty's collections. No one enters the Chamber of Marvels except the King's guests. And you are neither a foreign prince nor a great lord, so go your way. Only if you have written permission from Monsieur Bontemps. Quem é a 
Perhaps another Swiss guard, not me in any case. Did you attend the robing this morning? Indeed, madame. His majesty was in excellent humor and recommended that I work on new plays exalting virtue and Christian devotion. Themes to which it can hardly be said you are accustomed. But it's true that mythology no longer finds favor with the court now that Madame de Maintenon is dictating morality. Come, come, madame. I am no enemy of these eternal virtues, nor have I ever held them up to ridicule in my works. Yes. Why do you wish to know? But of course, you are Lalande. Monsieur Bontemps mentioned you. Here's the key. Mind it carefully. Posing, young man, don't disturb me. This is intolerable. My art gives rise to such jealousy. Besides, look carefully. 
they have composed this drivel? But wait, this is strange. Methinks I see some kind of musical notation on this stuff. The process seems to be simple enough, but tedious. And I have no time for it. I am extremely busy. Well, I like that. I didn't know your position required musical knowledge. I should be greatly surprised indeed. But I know what you can do for me. Very well. I have been commissioned by the Marquis de Seigneur, and I am obliged to work with Monsieur Racine. But it is extremely difficult to obtain his cooperation. Have you seen him recently? Very well. Find him and ask him if the precise words in the second verse of the Idol of Peace are People sing the peace that gives you joy or Men sing the peace that gives you joy. In the meantime, I shall decipher this pamphlet. What can I do for you, young man? I tell him it is people sing the peace that give you joy. Well, have you the answer? Well, at least that's one problem solved. The task is more arduous than I thought at first. I shall need more time. Now, take advantage of the situation to ask Monsieur Racine if he wrote a left hand in the fifth stanza.
Well, what is it now? Will this harassment never cease? Tell Monsieur Lully he should learn to read. I wrote a deft hand, not left. Well, have you the answer? Let him first learn to write before giving me any lessons. Well, well, have you the answer? There. Now I shall finally be able to devote myself to composing the carousel for His Highness. Yes, I have solved it. But the solution is as mysterious as the code itself. It says, the cat and the rats. I leave you to guess what this might mean. Well, Lalonde, how are your investigations progressing? Show me. Congratulations, Lalonde. You are on the right track. Now, persevere. Mm -hmm. The increasing number of these coded pamphlets is beginning to worry me. Hmm, I shall pen it right away. Everything seems to be in order. You may pass.
Whither go you with such a light step, my boy? Very well, let me see. It's quite simple. All these medals represent our Bourbon ancestors, except the one bearing the effigy of Charles VIII, who was part of the Valois dynasty, which was replaced by the Bourbon. What do you want from me? <clears throat> Tis true my master's trained me well. Show me what you have. Well, I can help you to decipher this epigraph, but I shall need time and uh, some documents. Come to my chamber. And since you deprived me of my dinner, bring me a light luncheon. I pray you to leave me be. I hear that the mass has finished, and now I must open the doors for his majesty to go to his dinner. During the mass, the officers of the royal kitchen, roasters, bakers, and their assistants were busy preparing the dinner. The food not eaten by the sovereign, whose appetite was legendary, would feed others, and ordinary people did not disdain to purchase leftovers from the kitchens. The public dinner was a spectacle that all the courtiers hastened to attend. Gentlemen, the king's meat! Only members of the royal family could sit at the sovereign's table, and only duchesses could sit before him. Well, my son, are you preparing a fine carousel for us? During this main dinner, three different courses were served, each with six different dishes, soups and starters, roasts and desserts. I do for you. His Majesty has just asked him a question. You mustn't think of speaking to him now.
That's what I need to calm my raging guts. I've finished my translation work. I'm leaving it on the table for you. Very good, but tis not enough. The element that would enable us to press home our investigations is obviously missing.
Congratulations, Lalonde. You are advancing in leaps and bounds. I was right to trust you. Now you must go to the office of Monsieur de Louvois and pursue your investigations. I shall see to it that no lucky bothers you. His Majesty no longer dissimulates his wrath at the Protestants, who continue to persist in their heretical faith. It is time for the Huguenots to bend. Alas, Monsieur, I fear lest all this end in bloodshed. Not in the province where I have charge of the Huguenots, Madam. His Majesty seeks the conversion of the Protestants, not their heads. Monsieur de Louvois is at work, Monsieur. It is by no means sure he'll leave you this power. My cavalry cut into the Spanish troops like a plowshare into soft soil. Ha <laughs> ha! Where are our battles past? Where are now our victories? It was 42 years ago, in 1643. I can scarcely believe it. Here, we are crying over our lost youth, when you should be by the king in your function as captain of the guard. And my cavalry cut into the Spanish troops like a plowshare into soft soil. Ha <laughs> Yeah. Oh! 
monsieur, there you are, the very man. I have found this scandalous text. I want you to give it to Monsieur Bonton immediately. Here, on the steps of the staircase, the author obviously wanted it to be found. Another? This pamphleteer shall drive me mad. Make haste, Lalonde. The events are on the move, and you are drawing to the end. The dinner was followed by fruit. Then the king devoted several hours to administering his kingdom. At this period, he liked to work in the apartment of the Marquise de Maintenon sometimes in company of his ministers. In the apartment of she whom he had secretly married, he found the peace and serenity that was necessary for the accomplishment of his work. For three hours, the king examined dossiers in detail. For the courtiers, this was one of the rare moments of the day when they didn't follow like shadows the sovereign's every movement. Some played cards with a passion. This card table could provide a veritable income and some did not hesitate to risk royal disfavor by cheating. Others were devoted to games of skill, like billiards or true madame, but brilliant conversation was one of the most highly appreciated pleasures at Versailles. Such a thing is impossible for me, monsieur. I met him the first time today and we spoke only of opera. the work coming along in the war so long? I would surely progress faster were it not for some underhand devil trying to hinder my progress. Come, come. You're not telling me that Mignard is again seeking your quarrel? Someone purloined my sketches this morning. However, on reflection, I do not think tis Mignard's doing. It is hardly like him. Don't you think you're inventing excuses, monsieur? I shall not stand for your questioning my word, monsieur. Have I ever complained about my numerous tasks? The ambassador's staircase, the hall of mirrors, the salon, not to mention the gardens. First I am pressed for time, and then a victim of jealousy, and now I am robbed. I shall not long tolerate such villainy.
Well, what is it, Lalonde? Ah, I see the problem, Lalonde. Jupiter was the old name of the Salon of War. Fail to see how this advances our investigations. I hope you have a good reason for this interruption. I have no desire to be distracted. Show me. I perceive sacrilege in these lines. Yes, it is an attack on our sovereign's policy. The third blank is obviously the so-called reformed religion. As for the rest, I cannot say. Find me another clue or consult someone more competent. Yes, go and see the Cardinal de Bouillon on my behalf. He will be able to help you. This engraving explains everything. The first missing word is King's Evil. The author of this lampoon is referring to our king, the Thaumaturge, which means that he can heal with his hands. And as this engraving shows us, he heals scrofula. I have no time for you. Cease this harassment instantly, or I shall have you chastised on the spot. But what do you want? Well, if you come from La Chaise, that is different. Show me this paper. It's obvious what it's about. And the second word is Dragonades, without a doubt. Take it back to La Chaise. I'm sure he'll be able to find the rest.
Good. Very good, Lalonde. You are quick-witted, and our investigations are coming along at pace. Here we find this strange bestiary again. The dragon and the file. I wonder what our pamphleteer is getting at. What is it, Lalonde? I shall give you the key to the garret. From there, you will be able to lower the chandelier. Eight sentences that constitute a strange bestiary. And the text wherein this madman warned you also spoke of eight elements. I think we shall find no more today. I have noted the eight sentences on a piece of paper for you. Take it and join in the stroll in the garden of the chateau. Observe and analyze as you go. According to the text you gave me, 
A key has been hidden in a tub holding an orange tree. Use this occasion to explore the orangery. We are close to the solution. Make haste. His Majesty shall soon arrive. Towards five o'clock in the afternoon, after his work session, the king walked in the gardens and visited the buildings. He joined the courtiers who awaited him in the marble courtyard. Only the privileged were allowed to join in the king's cortege. The group crossed the low gallery and goes to the terrace, then to the water parterre from which point the king liked to spend a few moments admiring the facade of the chateau. From the orangery to the colonnade, the king followed in detail the progression of the different works in progress. The visit ended at Little Venice. The king had gondoliers come from the city of the Doges, and in fine weather, they took the court out on the clear waters of the canal. What business have you here, young man? That's no surprise, my boy. Under ideal conditions, these trees, as you call them, supply us with oranges, rarely keys. So, this serious matter, but, I assure you, there are no keys around here. However, there are other orange trees in the Hall of Mirrors and the Salon of Apollo. You can look there when you return to the chateau.
I have been observing you, young man, and I can inform you that you violate the spirit of this part of the maze. No wonder. You should know, young man, that Aesop's Grove, where we stand at the moment, was designed to be visited in a very precise sequence. I have other preoccupations beside teaching the finer points of this promenade. But know this, young man, it takes time to follow the sequence and consult the maxims in order to draw a moral from them. My belly aches atrociously. Uh, run to fetch me some rose syrup from the apothecary close to the orangery. Uh, now I feel better. This decoction is the only thing that can ease the pain. Thank you, young man. I shall not forget your gesture, boy. You can be assured of that. Now I go to join the king.
Ah, Lalonde. I was beginning to worry about you. You've been wandering in the garden for too long. If you've finished, it's now time that you return to the chateau. Are you sure? I shall not allow you into the garden again. It would be a waste of time. Very well. I hope we shall achieve our goals before the king's going to bed. On summer evenings, it was not unknown for the king to replace supper with a collation prepared for him in one of the groves of the park. Then, when night had fallen, all returned to the chateau for the king's going to bed. Ladies were not invited to attend his going to bed, nor were they invited to attend the rising and robing. The king summoned them to the salon to bid them good night. It is our wish, ladies, that on this night of the solstice, the hours may be propitious to your rest. Your Majesty. Then the going to bed ceremony could really begin. The courtiers who had attended the robing in the morning made it their business to attend. To whom shall the candlestick be given, sir? The king transformed each of his everyday actions into acts of magnanimity. The right to hold the candlestick at his going to bed was given to persons of distinction, often visiting foreigners, who thus acquired the right to accompany the king to his actual bedchamber. But on this evening... The firebrand! The firebrand! Come here, Lalo! Stop this madman! Gentlemen, the Marquis de Scaparella bids you a good night.
Lalonde, I have spoken with his majesty of your zeal in this matter. The king wishes to compliment you. Monsieur Bonton has told us all about the matter in which you are involved. I feel no anger on seeing the end of this day, which was extraordinary that it should be placed under the sign of the moon rather than that of the sun. Nevertheless, monsieur, you well deserve to be, wherever you go, the ambassador of our time.
Who could have possibly accept, even in a dream, that the maddest of the man should destroy this shadow? Play again. It's now or never.